Hello everyone. Welcome back. This is chapter three of Chemistry One with Dr. Rhonda Cofield, and we are going to be looking at stoichiometry today. And so stoichiometry is a real fancy word of saying things are in ratios or proportions when they react. And so we get into the you can't create matter, you can't destroy matter, because whatever you start with, the number of atoms you've got to end up with. So we will look at molecular and formula masses in this uh, section, percent composition, chemical equations, mole and molar masses, combustion analysis, calculating with balanced chemical equations, and then limiting reactants. And this is a very meaty chapter, okay? So you're going to be getting a lot of things um, Sometimes people say, what are you going to cover on the test? Well, this is what I'm going to cover on the test. You're going to have to meet these learning objectives, and so your test questions are going to follow these so that you can um, let us know um, what, what exactly you do and do not know from looking at the chapter. So this is part one of stoichiometry ratios of combination. And this first topic we're going to look at is calculating molecular and formula masses. Remember, a molecule is a covalent compound. A um, ionic compound is going to be due to a formula. So there are formula masses, and then there are molecular masses. So using the atomic masses from the periodic table, that's the one with all the decimal places, we can determine the molecular mass, which is the mass in AMUs, atomic mass units, of an individual molecule. Now, we did this for atoms, okay, the individual elements. Now, we're going to do it for molecules, and it's a super simple process. You just add up all the elements that are in the formula, and then you come up with the overall atomic mass of that molecule, okay? So in the case of water, as you see here, if you look at the H on the periodic table, it has an atomic mass of one. It's actually like 1.008, okay? And then you have oxygen, which is right at 16.00, it's 15.9998 or something. All right, and so that's AMUs, but we have two of the H's, so we're going to have to have two times 1.008, and then plus 16, and that's going to give us, using correct significant figures, 18.02 AMUs as the molecular mass of water, H2O. Even though an ionic compound doesn't have a molecular mass, we use its empirical formula, that lowest whole number ratio, to determine its formula mass. And that's what we call it when we're talking about ionic compounds. So let's practice. Calculate the molecular mass or the formula mass, depending on which one you need, that's appropriate for each one of the following compounds. So in the case of propane, we have three C's and we have eight H's, okay? So we know that, and I'm going to just use round numbers just to make it a little bit easier. You can use the actual AMU and be a little bit off for me. That's fine, okay? Um, in the, um, the typed version of this work. I'm using the, um, the actual with the decimal places, and so you can see both ways, all right? But this is just to get it, to do it more quickly. So you've got three carbons. Carbon's atomic mass is 12. So that means that we have 36 AMUs that are due to carbon. Then we have eight hydrogens, which are approximately one. So that gives us eight AMUs due to the hydrogen. And then when we add those up, 
we get 44 AMUs. In the case of lithium, we have lithium, which if I look that up, has 6.941, because I had to look that up on the chart. Okay, and I have one of those. I have one oxygen. And I have one hydrogen, and I'll just use all of the decimals on everything since I've got them on this one. Okay, and so when I add those up, the lithium hydroxide is going to be 23.95 AMUs. This one, if I used all of the um, correct stuff, would be 44.09 AMUs. So if we're using the exact stuff from the um, periodic table. This last one, we've got all kinds of stuff going on here, and we've got parentheses. And so I want to emphasize, maybe I need that room. Okay, so for C, we've got barium, we've got carbon, we've got hydrogen, and we got oxygen. All right, so we have one barium. Okay, and one barium, pull this down because I have kind of cheated and got these. Okay, barium is 137.3 AMUs. All right, I only have one. Okay, carbon, now carbon, I have two in the, in here, but outside the parentheses is a two. And so when I have a parentheses, that means I multiply. So two times two is four. So I have four times 12 equals 48 AMUs. Hydrogens, I have three times two. So I have six. And oxygen, I have two times two, which is four. So that's 16 times four, which is four, two. 64, okay, and so when I add all of that up, I should get 255.4 AMUs as the formula mass for barium acetate. All right, so that's how you work them. So go back and look again. It's tricky when you have a parenthesis around something, so just make sure that you pay attention to that, that you're going to multiply what's inside that, period, that um, parentheses, okay? So it's a great idea to go ahead and, and practice now using calcium carbonate, nitrous acid, and ammonium sulfide, and go ahead and remember when you got a number outside the parentheses, you're gonna multiply everything inside. If you don't see a number, that means it's a one. So go ahead and try those and see how you do. Okay, you can stop it now or you can continue. I'm going to talk about off another topic in, in, in this part, which is going to be um, percent composition. And percent composition, we're going to use the mass and the molecular mass of a compound to figure out how much of each thing is in that, like 